Yes, so uh, first things first, um, this is going to be recorded and it's going to go online on YouTube later. Uh, you can have your video uh, on or off however you like it. Um, on for us is nice, so we, so we can see who, who, all he is, who all he is in the room, but like keep in mind there is a chance that then your face will be on YouTube. Uh, we ask you to stay uh, muted throughout the presentation. If you have any questions, please type them in, into the chat and uh, we will have some people, if it's a, a question that has a short answer, we will answer it in the chat. If it's a bit longer answer, we, we might cover it. Um, I will just like explain to you, uh, explain to you about it. Um, so with those uh, announcements in place, uh, let's get started. So first, a quick overview of what this program is. So this is a MOS program on uh, quantum computer science. So it's about quantum computing and quantum computers. So these are a new type of computers that are better suited for some tasks. I'll say a little bit more about this later. And there is a potential for this to be uh, the, next, the, the, the next technological breakthrough. Um, so currently, there are not too many masters uh, devoted to, to uh, quantum science in the world. This is a relatively new field. Uh, and in particular, the focus of this program will be on the computer science part. And in that sense, it is uh, it is very internationally exclusive. There are other programs, but they are more focused on physics. We are focused on computer science and the mathematics side of things. Uh, and our lecturers are all from the uh, from, from the internationally acclaimed uh, Research Institute of QSoft. So you will be uh, you will you will be taught classes by. Um, um, yeah, by the researchers who are, who are at, at, at the top of the field themselves. Um, so uh, quantum computing is very, is very well positioned in the Netherlands. Uh, there is a big national funding called Quantum Delta. It's part of the reason we're able to, to form this program. And there's, interest, and there's interest of many big companies and startups, and it's definitely a field that is growing right now. So we feel this is the right time for, uh, for this program. Uh, I just want to give an important disclaimer right now, which is this is a new program, and we're currently in the process of, of accreditation by the NVO. That means that you're currently not able to register for it. Uh, at the end, we will show you a mailing list. If you sign up for this mailing list, we will inform you of the process and where we are. We expect that we can start this program uh, in September, just September 2024, if everything goes all right, which we fully expect will happen. But yeah, you should be aware that this program is currently not yet accredited. Okay. So why are we making this new program? Well, it's because quantum computing is currently taking off. So this, uh, the idea of a quantum computer has been around since the 1980s. Uh, and, it's, and, it, and it has been theorized for a long time that these things should be possible. And the idea is that you exploit features of quantum particles um, and they're like the, the properties that quantum particles have, entanglement, superposition. And in this way, you can do uh, certain problems much faster than you can do with a normal, what we would call a classical computer. Essentially by uh, using the fact that your bit, your sort of zero and one, it doesn't have to be a zero or a one, but it can sort of be a zero and a one. And in this way, you can, um, yeah, you can do certain computations much faster. And it has been, it's a very recent development that we now have small scale noisy quantum computers. So here you have to think about quantum computers with maybe 50 to 100 quantum bits. Um, and yeah, we, there, there's, there's, there's a lot of money currently being betted on this being the next, the next technological revolution. And it's a very active field in which I myself am also have been active for the last six or seven years. Okay. Um, you might have seen any of these uh, of, of of these of these um, of these headlines in the last few years. For instance, uh, Google claiming quantum supremacy, meaning that they did a computation faster than any classical computer could ever could. Um, but you see also like these these headlines. Some of them they are a bit on the hype side of things. And with this degree, you will also learn to separate the hype from what is real and what like can truly be expected from quantum computers. So why this program? Um, so currently there is no direct way in which you can learn about quantum computing. Usually you would do a master in a related field, like say mathematics or a computer science or physics, and you would maybe take some course in quantum computing, but then you learn a lot uh, on the job once you uh, once you start your PhD or when you start to work for a, a, for, for a quantum computing company. 
Um, since this field is growing so much and there is a lot of uh, the companies and, and, and research want a lot of new people with the skills to start there, um, yeah, we feel that it's like a more direct road uh, is necessary. Um, and so yeah, the Netherlands um, is like nationally trying to be at the front of this development. And this is uh, what Quantum Delta is. It's a large funding pool to try to uh, improve the status of the Netherlands in terms of quantum technologies. Uh, and as part of this effort, uh, there are now or will there will be a couple of master programs in this direction. Um, so maybe it will be helpful to compare like our program to these a little bit. So for instance, in uh, this year, uh, Delft and Leiden had uh, started a new master program in quantum information science and technology. This is a physics degree, which is very focused on the experimental side of things. Uh, Maastricht will start, I think, next year a AI specialization in quantum computing. So this is for people that are interested in AI and then also want to learn a little bit about quantum computing. Uh, Eindhoven will have a uh, applied physics master in nano quantum and photonics. So again, this is a very physics oriented master, very experimental. And then what we're going to do is this master quantum computer science, which is based on the theory of things. So it's learning about the computer science things, the mathematics side of things, um, yeah. the quantum software side of things, if you will. Um, yeah, so maybe an example of uh, what kind of developments we can expect in, in, the, in the quantum ecosystem. So this is a roadmap published by IBM in 2019 for what they expect their developments to be. So IBM, for instance, is expecting a kind of Moore's law. So classically, a Moore's law is saying that the amount of compute you will get for a dollar is doubling every couple of years. And they are expecting the same thing to happen for quantum computers. So right now, we are... Uh, I think we're a bit optimistic. So I think we're right now we're at this level of 127 qubits, but uh, we see that like it's yeah they are expecting to progress, and that's like in a couple of years we will have like uh, quantum computers of a size where they can really start to probe the things that we can do that we can't do with a classical computer. Okay, um, we here in Amsterdam we have uh, a very strong connection to industry and especially the quantum computing industry. So I want to introduce uh, Kuhn Groenland, who is our local specialist in their connections with uh, the companies. So I'm just going to change seats <laughs> and Kuhn will tell a little bit about that. Yes, uh, thank you, John. Uh, my name is Kuhn Groenland. I'm a colleague of John. We work together at QSoft. And uh, my task is to connect the academic research that happens here and also the education to companies. So I think in Amsterdam, we have an unfair advantage that we've been for a long time Doing this quantum research, we have one of the most productive institutes in the world. But uh, since a short amount of time, an increasing number of companies have tried to focus on quantum. So what you see here in this image is an overview map of Amsterdam Science Park, where the University of Amsterdam is located. So in the middle, you see, for example, the UVA labs, which are the experiments that happen here. But around it, there are many organizations, many startups, many companies that yeah, are working on quantum. Some of them are knowledge institutes funded by the government. But especially if you look at uh, Startup Village on the right-hand side, you see a couple of uh, startups that are really quite new right now. Uh, but we expect that in the next couple of years, we'll see more and more startups and also a couple of them that will become increasingly big. Now you might ask, are these only small companies that are interested? No, not at all. There are many larger companies that are very actively collaborating with us um, and I guess if you follow the master's program, you will see many, many of them. Um, some of them are real end users that don't really build a quantum computer, but just want to use it, like ABN AMRO or Bosch or Capgemini. And some of them are companies that actually build a quantum computer, uh, like Pascal, which has an office in Amsterdam. Uh, Quix is a really cool party that's building a photonic quantum computer with an office right next to the UFA and uh, many others. Now you might ask, why is that interesting for a student. Well, this is why I think it would be super cool to have this right next to your master's program. First of all, I think as part of the program, we'll hear more about this in a bit. Uh, you can actually do an internship with one of these companies. And also it's good to get to know future employers, see what you could possibly do after this master program. And what I think is one of the nicest features is that we have many, many events and conferences. And I think people that visit them they'll be the first to know about the new state-of-the-art developments. So can I give the word back to you? Yeah. Thank you, Kun. All right. 
Yes, yeah, so let me say a little bit more about the contents of the program, the curriculum. Uh, so first of all, like this program is very research based and that's we feel is necessary because quantum computing is still being developed and it still requires a lot of active research in, in order to result in something useful. So we built this program with a very strong connection to the research being done at QSoft. And at this moment, all the lecturers that we have uh, for the program are QSoft members. And most of them will be teaching to their speci to their to their speciality. Um, yeah, and much of the industry are, uh, using or wanting to use quantum computers are is also research based. Um, right. So I want to stress again: this is a theoretical program. It's not an engineering program. There are no practical lab sessions, but we have sessions with like your own laptop where you will be using, uh, for instance, uh, the IBM Qiskit toolkit to interact with quantum computers. You will be programming quantum computers, but you won't be making them. Uh, yeah, our focus is on theoretical physics, mathematics, algorithms, programming, all that nice stuff. Okay. So uh, the QSOF research lines, these are the areas that the research uh, in Amsterdam and in QSOF is strong at. And we have courses that uh, fall in, all to, in, in these five different tracks. So we have quantum simulation, a few qubit applications. So this is about what can we do with quantum computers that are still like uh, in the near term? So there are smaller quantum computers that are more noisy. You can do less things with them, or we can try to figure out, can we still do interesting things with them? We have quantum information science. So this is more foundational. This is exploring not necessarily what quantum computers can do, but more what can you do in a world that is quantum? So um, think about um, uh, communication using, using a quantum links or... Um, just the foundations of why the world is quantum. Then we have uh, cryptography. So this is essentially two different aspects. We have both quantum cryptography, which is a type of a type of cryptography that you do with a quantum computer or with a quantum device. And then we have post-quantum security or post-quantum cryptography, which is this classical regular cryptography, which is secure against a quantum attacker. So these are two different strands and we uh, cover both of them. Uh, quantum algorithms and complexity is a, uh, is a is a is a very strong suit of QSoft. I would say we're we're we are uh, world leaders in this in this aspect. This is just developing new algorithms to run on quantum computers. And then finally, again, we have a strong uh, connection to uh, to uh, to business. So to understand, okay, well, how can we translate these theoretical insights into something that's actually useful for companies or useful for society? Right, so this is what the first year of the curriculum looks like. So we have um, we have our uh, courses here. I'm not sure if you can see my mouse if I move it around. Uh, yeah. So we have these light blue courses. These are the mandatory courses that every student will follow. Uh, and then we have these more dark dark uh, courses, and these are the restricted choice courses. So and here you'll you'll make a selection based on your own interests. So we see that the um, the year starts with here with a catch up course of one EC. So this is the first week, which is going to be a dedicated uh, week, just to make sure everyone is up to speed on the core knowledge that everyone needs to have. Because we expect students to come from mathematics, physics, computer science. Of course, people have different strengths, so we want to make sure that everyone has the same base layer of knowledge, so that you can immediately start with our two core courses on quantum computing and introduction to quantum hardware. Uh, so the first is just going to be the essentials of quantum computing, and the second one, introduction to quantum hardware, is really going to learn a, a, a little bit about the physics behind it. So what kind of different platforms are there that you can use to build a quantum computer on? And then we have quantum information theory, uh, which is going to be more foundational on the quantum side. And the orientation on year two, which we'll say a little bit more about, but this is sort of to prepare you for the second year, which you will do your thesis project. Uh, and a quantum and society, uh, we feel it's important that you understand the implications of uh, quantum technologies and quantum information for society. So we have a, a course where we, uh, where, we, where we think a little bit more about the ethical implications, societal implications of these devices existing. Um, and yeah, and then these are all courses that are sort of based on the specialties of the lecturers. So these are um, specialized courses where um, you can already think, okay, in which direction do I want to do my thesis? Like, which course do I uh, want to follow so that I'm prepared to do my thesis maybe in this direction? And of course, there will be elective space uh, where you can pick uh, courses from other master programs that you find interesting and that are related to quantum. So the second year, 
uh, we offer three different options for your second year. So everyone will do a 30 EC master thesis. Uh, master's and seminar, there's also as part of your thesis, you will be presenting your work uh, two times. Um, but then we give three different options. The first option is to extend your master thesis so that instead of a 30 EC project, you do a bigger 54 EC project. Uh, we think this is interesting for students that expect to do uh, research after the master. So perhaps they want to go in the direction of a PhD. Uh, so then they have a longer time to do research. And then for this type of project, you will coordinate with a thesis supervisor to find a project with a larger scope so you can spend more time on it. We offer the option of a quantum internship. So um, we will be, uh, we, we have lines towards companies and we will uh, try to find companies that have interesting internship projects that you can, that you can work at. So you can, you, you get to have some experience with how it is to work um, at a company to do quantum research or some quantum work there. And if you don't want to do these extended options, you can uh, just do additional electives and uh, specialize further in the field of your choice. And then we have a couple of more uh, restricted choice courses. All right, so let me just catch a model. Um, apart from these uh, courses, which are spe um, specifically created for the master, the UVA also has many existing quantum related courses. So we've made a long list of courses from physics, mathematics, computer science, but also chemistry or artificial intelligence, uh, which uh, would also strengthen your knowledge on quantum computing, quantum mechanics, quantum information theory. Um, and so you can pick any of these courses that you want in addition. Um, yeah, so for instance, if you're if you're uh, interested in mathematics, you can follow some more courses from the mathematics master, and then you can use this in your thesis project, which you now have more knowledge on mathematics. <coughs> Sorry. All right, uh, so we have one of the teachers uh, of our program in the meeting with us, uh, Stacy Jeffy, who is a uh, senior researcher at QSoft. Who, will, who is uh, teaching the course on advanced quantum algorithms. Uh, and she will uh, say a little bit about this. So Stacy, if you could mute, all right. Thanks, John. Um, yeah, so I'll be, I'll be teaching a course in uh, advanced quantum algorithms. And um, this course will have the sort of quantum computing course that is a core course in the, in the first term as a prerequisite. And so you'll already have seen some quantum algorithms by this point. But in, the purpose of this course will be to dive deeper into quantum algorithms. So here you will develop um, a more detailed understanding of, um, uh, of some quantum algorithms. And there will be a focus here on not just quantum algorithms for, for specific problems, but uh, learning about the kinds of tools that you can use to develop further quantum algorithms. And we'll also look at, um, you know, this because this is... As, as John said, this is really like, a, this is meant to be a theory master's program. So we'll also kind of focus on understanding what is the power of quantum computers. And so we'll learn, for example, about general characterizations of quantum algorithms that allow us to kind of reason about quantum algorithms in general and what they can do. So um, some example topics, we'll, we'll study query complexity. Um, so quantum query complexity, this is like a kind of idealized model of complexity and we can compare it with a, a a classical counterpart and this helps us understand how do quantum computers compare with classical computers in their power what is the fundamental difference where should we look for quantum speedups what are the best speedups we can have and, and questions like this we'll look at uh, tools like um, an important tool is quantum random walks or quantum walks and the, the, this is a tool for designing quantum algorithms in the relatively easy way. You can sort of design a classical random walk algorithm, and then you can kind of recompile it into a quantum algorithm. This is not the case for uh, classical algorithms generally, but for some very specific types, this is possible. And of course, it's a super useful thing to be able to do because designing quantum algorithms otherwise is, is quite difficult, as you'll see if you take my course. <laughs> um, and uh, you know, we'll also look at uh, another um, model of computing called span programs which I think is very cool because it's it's a complete full characterization of quantum algorithms, but it's actually using a model that was developed in classical complexity theory before people were even talking about quantum computings, quantum computers, and this kind of allows us to compare a little bit with um, some uh, classical models of computation. Um, 
so yeah this is this is kind of um the main idea of this course and it's uh i think it's rather unique in in the world i think there's only a handful of courses that look at quantum algorithms at this uh at this advanced level we would really be be quite close to the cutting edge of research so um like for for instance you would definitely have an opportunity to look at uh like super recent results maybe they haven't even come out yet as of this meeting um but that that builds on some of the the things that you would learn in the course um and uh uh yeah and as john said this is this is going to be on the more theory side of quantum algorithms we we won't talk as much about applied algorithms that are based more on uh on heuristics this is going to be on provable speed ups and uh and things like that for the most part thanks john i'll hand back to you Right. Thanks, Stacey. Right. So th this is one of the of the of the restricted choice courses that you can decide to take um, if you want to specialize into quantum algorithms. All right. So now let me say a bit more about um, yeah, the, the student side of things. Like, what are what are the prerequisites? What what will you be doing in the master? Um, so for us, one of the most important things, since it's such a theory heavy program, is that you have a strong mathematical foundation. So you need to know how to write a mathematical proof and you need to be comfortable writing mathematical proofs. For instance, if we ask you to prove something by induction, you should know how to write a proof by induction. Uh, and then like uh, quantum computing is essentially applied linear algebra. So you have to have a strong grounding in linear algebra. Uh, so this will be from any bachelor program should be fine from physics or mathematics or computer science. Uh, if you have familiarity with programming, say in Python, any other programming, that would also be, be helpful, although Yes, uh, we, we only have a few courses where programming will be uh, a core part of it. Um, what you don't need to have is have followed the bachelor course in quantum computing. Of course, it's helpful if you have, and also it would allow you to tell if, if you find this stuff interesting and you want to take a master. Um, and, and yeah, so uh, and you, and you, you don't have to have followed courses from all three disciplines of mathematics, computer science, physics. Overall, we would say that uh, this program is right for you if you have uh, an interest. If you have an interest in physics, mathematics, and computer science, um, yeah, if you want to follow a program that's very research focused, so it's very closely tied to academia and active research. Uh, if you want to follow a program that's on the cutting edge, so it's really on the recent tech technological developments. So uh, we also like, can't say yet exactly what you'll use the knowledge for because it's still being developed as we speak. Uh, and then finally, if you're also interested in sort of the ethical or societal implications of this new technology, like how will it change society that this stuff exists? Okay, so let me say a little bit more about um, the catch-up course. Since again, like we will have students from many different backgrounds. So our idea is that in the first week, uh, we want to bring you all up to speed so that you can start uh, sort of our two core courses on quantum computing and introduction to quantum hardware. Um, so this consists of three parts. So physics, mathematics, computer science, and you'll be you will you'll be taught all three parts, but then you can you can decide which part you want to focus on. Like if you feel like oh I know a little I know a little bit less about this, I'm a little a little bit less comfortable about this part, uh, then you can spend more of your uh, your own study time on that. So for instance, on the physics side, you'll learn about harmonic oscillators and Schrodinger's equation. On mathematics, we'll recover sort of the proofs on eigenvalues and Bra-Cat notation. And on the computer science uh, side of things, we talk about like uh, how to analyze an uh, how to analyze an algorithm, what the big O notation was again, um, and, yeah, and then also like later in the year we have this orientation course in period four and five, where um, yeah you'll spend some time like uh, thinking about okay, how do I want to structure my second year? Like do I want to do a longer master project? Do I want to try to find a, a company to do an internship with? Uh, do I want to figure out okay do I want to follow some more courses in a certain subject? And so we have a, 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 a little bit more guidance uh, to like make sure you're prepared for the second year. Okay, then um, I want to I want to let one of the students of the UVA uh, uh, talk to you about this. So obviously we're we haven't started yet the program, so we can't uh, let you uh, we, we don't have any testimonial from a student who has taken the program, but we are already of, uh, offering quite a lot of quantum courses. So uh, I want to introduce uh, Sergio Lazari, who has followed. Well, as you can see, many quantum courses, but I'll let him. Hi, everyone. My name is Sergio Lazzari, and I'm currently a second year master of the Master in Physics and Astronomy, theoretical physics track. And I'm here, as John were saying, was saying, 
to explain to you some of my experiences with these courses. As you can see, I, I took a bunch of quantum related courses and you can see that I followed quantum computing and quantum information theory specifically. And these are gonna, to, uh, gonna be the two core courses of your, of your master, the two compulsory courses. And one thing that I want to say is that the, it, it was a very interesting experience to have, because as I said, I come from a, a I am in physics right now. I'm studying physics, so I'm just one of one of the three parts of the of this um, interdisciplinary uh, future master. And to me, it was very interesting to see and experience different kind of way of studying because in the end it's it's always different if, even if we we talk about similar things we, there is always different approaches and studying quantum computing and quantum information theory in these courses was was an interesting experience in this respect i i also want to say um that right now i'm doing my my thesis in uh, in quantum information with a professor from uh, qsoft so something similar to what you could do if you decide to take this path and I wanted to say that these two courses that I followed last year are helping me a lot to be able to read literature to, uh, to approach my thesis project with, uh, with the knowledge that I need. I, I do not feel any lack of knowledge and I think they are, they are great introductory, introductory courses to approach these, these fields. And I think you could try and follow them. I think they are great. If you have any question, you can try and text them in the chat and I guess I will give back word to John. All right. Thank you, Sergio. All right. Um, yes. So let me just conclude some things. Um, so we discussed, um, so as I said, quantum computers, they're better suited for some tasks. And um, yeah, this like people are investing a lot of time and effort and money in trying to make these a reality and make sure we can do useful things with them. Um, it's still like a very developing field. It's very new. So that's the amount of education, the amount of master programs in this field is still very small. And uh, especially with our focus on the theory side of things, computer side of things, um, there's very few other programs like it. Uh, our lecturers are all uh, very acclaimed researchers. Um, and yeah, there's interest from many, many different companies. So if you have this degree, there's a good chance you will find a job in an interesting, interesting place. Uh, again, I want to stress that um, uh, we are still under accreditation by the NVO. You cannot register for the program yet. Uh, later, I will show you uh, the mailing list that you can sign up to, um, and then you, we will update you when we have new information about when you can register for the program. All right, then I think it's time for the Q&A session. Uh, I believe that uh, uh, Lisa and Cappuccino have already answered some of your questions, but there's also some other questions that I should answer. Uh, and you're going to leave this slide on for now. So we have a website online. Uh, if you um, search for Master of Quantum Computer Science UFA, then you will find this website probably. Um, and I think you can just send an email to this email address at the bottom. And then, um, yeah, we uh, we can give you, if you have any questions, we can, uh, we can answer them there. All right. So I have a couple of questions here from, uh, from people in the audience. So there was a question about the option for a double master with, for instance, physics. So we are currently exploring options for offering double master programs. Um, we are uh, already talking with mathematics to try to arrange that there will be a double master program with the master mathematics. Uh, this such a double master program would always be 180 EC. So instead of 120, it will be 180. So that's 50% more course load for which you still get two years to do it. So it's definitely ambitious to do a double master, but it is uh, like we're trying to see if we can make this possible. Um, we haven't officially discussed with physics yet, but we are going to see whether this is also a possibility. Although um, in terms of overlap, in terms of courses, um, we feel that the master mathematics is a better fit for a double master program. Um, by the way, I'm just answering questions. Um, if you feel that like there's that this raises more questions, just 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 type them into the chat, and we will get back to that later as well. Um, which bachelor background would give you an advantage: mathematics, physics, or computer science? So we are not requiring any background knowledge in quantum mechanics, uh, although of course it's beneficial if you have some. 
Um, so for us, it's really, um, since also we have two of our core courses, um, so maybe I can also go back to, so we have here our two courses, the quantum computing course and the quantum information theory course. And you see these are eight EC courses, and that is because they are part of the national master math program. So these are really courses that exist in the mathematics framework. So you need to be uh, able to uh, finish these courses, which are part of a master math program. So you have to have a strong mathematical background. So we feel students with um, that have, say, done a bachelor in mathematics, but then also with some physics courses or like some courses in quantum mechanics, they would have a very good background. Uh, physics students that have done uh, that have gone out of the way to uh, do more mathematics courses. So maybe they follow some courses from 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 the mathematics bachelor, and they would have the good background. A computer science students again, computer science students with a focus on theoretical computer science would have a very good background for a program. So where they have done uh, like really focusing on the mathematics of computer science and learning to prove things. Okay, I got the question of how many students we expect for the first year. Um, this is very hard for us to answer at this moment. Um, we can only say that um, there is this new master program in Delft and Leiden, which is on uh, quantum science and technology. And they started the first year with 20 students. And we are also like sort of expecting that we will also start with about 20 students. But um, it's very hard to say since we uh, this program doesn't exist yet. But um, yeah, our, like, our hope slash goal is that we will start with about 20 and then build up to about 50. Uh, is there a numerous fixes? Uh, no, there's not. There's no numerous fixes. Um, as part of our um, uh, of our entry requirements, we will require that you have to have a certain a certain grade for relevant courses. We are still in the process of discussing what this will exactly be. And this is mostly to make sure that you'll be able to follow this program because um, some of the core courses uh, are not the easiest, and we want you to to have a, a, a to, to have a good time following this uh, this program. Um, but yeah, like if you <clears throat> um, yeah, if you are very interested in the program and you feel you have the right background and um, um, and then your grades are are like good enough, we we encourage you to to apply. Um, Okay, so the qu was a question about um, how many ECs are available for uh, for the choice for for sort of free choice. Um, so we have um, twenty seven ECs on uh, mandatory choice courses that you see all here, the blue ones, uh, together with the thirty EC um, uh, thesis project. Then we have twenty four ECs of restricted choice. And then depending on the choice in your second year, you have an additional 24 EC of elective space. Um, so yeah, depending on your choices, you can have either a lot of elective space or not or, or, or not that much. Also, in terms of the 24 ECs of restricted choice, we could very well imagine that students want to follow more of these courses, which is also uh, perfectly fine. So you can follow more of these courses. Um, I don't have the exact number of ECs that you will definitely have in the in the in the free choice uh, electives. Um, I know we will you will have at least twelve ECs of a completely free choice. So that completely free choice we mean you can take a, a master course from any master, um, and then we have a long list of uh, courses that we feel are related enough to quantum that they're relevant to the program, and uh, these you can follow um, any amount, well up to the one hundred twenty EC that you need to follow. Um, all right. Um, are there some more questions? Yes, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, so we asked about the timeline for the accreditation, which I understand. Of course, you want to know like when can, when can I know whether I'm allowed to go into this program. So um, we expect that in January we will have the visitation of the accreditation, and then immediately after this visitation. We will uh, know whether we have a a um, informal yes or no to start the program. Um, so, what does informal yes means? In practice, an informal yes always means that it will become a formal yes. Uh, but this process takes three months. So, like, hopefully, halfway in January, we will be able to tell you whether we got the informal yes. And then, if you have the informal yes, we expect with very high probability that we will be able to start the program. 
But then the take this process from going from the informal to the formal will take about three months. So then we expect that we will be able to have the full answer for you uh, halfway through April. Um, for this reason, we are extending the deadline to register for our program up to June. So that you have plenty of time to register for the program. Um, it also means that like, if you want to be certain that you will be able to enter another master program, you can already register for another master program. And then once our thing becomes available, you can also register for ours and then um, deregister for the other program. Um, Okay, so I got a question on how do we ensure that the students have a certain level if we don't require a specific bachelor? So we are in the process of making a list of mathematics courses from the bachelor that we feel prepare you sufficiently for having at least a mathematical background to follow the program. And again, we will also be requiring a certain grade, although we're still discussing what exactly this grade uh, will be. Um, so yeah, that's that's what we're what we're uh, expecting there. We're also going to ask students to provide a short letter where we're going to ask some questions about why you're interested in this program. Can you tell us a little bit about the background you have uh, to hopefully allow us to determine whether you'll be able to successfully uh, do this program. Okay. Okay, we got a question about uh, what do we expect in terms of research opportunities after doing this master for graduates? So the field of quantum computing and quantum technologies, quantum information is growing, it's growing a lot right now. Uh, and I know people are always uh, dying to have really good students for their PhD positions. And I think with this program, you'd be better suited for it than many other master students because i suppose that you are a research group and you're looking to hire phd students and you have one phd student who has done a master in physics with some quantum courses versus um like this master program where you have like specialized knowledge on like many topics in quantum computing. you would have like you would, you would very much have a leg up and i i would assume you would be very desirable for these stuff for, for these type of research groups i also know that uh in uh, just companies working in the quantum space, they have a very hard time finding good people, the people with the right knowledge and the right skills. Um, there was a report uh, last year by the American Physical Society where they um, they estimated that for every uh, that, that that for every one hundred um, positions in like a quantum related uh, in in the quantum related position, there's only about thirty qualified people to fill it. So currently, there's a huge gap in um, in the in people with the right knowledge. It's also for this reason that the Dutch government decided to make this big project, this quantum delta project, and give this much money to try to uh, build new master programs and new education opportunities to educate people that can do these uh, that can do these types of um, of this research and in the, in in an in industry. Okay. Um, I think currently we're out of questions. So maybe while maybe some people are thinking of other questions, let me just show you a little bit more about these restricted choice elective courses, because I think they're, they're one of the interesting parts of this master. Um, so these courses were really built with, uh, in collaboration with the teachers of the courses. So they're really teaching towards, um, their speciality, but also a speciality of QSOF, of this research institute. Um, and yes, for instance, we have a course on near-term quantum computing. So this is really about what kind of algorithms, what kind of problems can we solve or do we hope to solve with the computers we have now or that we will have in the next few years. So these are computers with just maybe a couple of hundred qubits that are very noisy. So you're restricted in types of computations you can do. Um, and yeah, like what, what can we do with them? Um, we have this quantum programming project, which I will be coordinating. Uh, and the idea here is that we will be working together with an open source uh, quantum software foundation, a unitary fund, and we, they will be connecting us to maintainers of certain open source uh, quantum software projects. Uh, and you'll be working on to, together with this maintainer in a group of students, and you'll be implementing like actual features or actual useful things that people can then use in this, uh, this project. And you'll also learn something about like, what is this project for, like well, what do we need for uh, Stacy already talked about the course Advanced Quantum Algorithms. 
Uh, so you just like, you go more in depth. It's really a follow-up course on this quantum computing course here, where you go more in depth about specific quantum algorithms, like more recent quantum algorithms. Uh, we have the full stack of quantum computing course, which I will be teaching uh, as well, uh, where we go into the, the ins and outs of how do you translate like a high level description of a quantum algorithm into something that actually runs onto a physical device. So there's many layers in between there, because first you have to translate um, your algorithm into like lower level instructions. And those instructions have to match, have to like map into something to be physically executed, but you also have to correct for the errors that are introduced by running on a physical device. So there's, there's a lot to say there. Um, we have our quantum, we have our quantum cryptography course. Uh, so this is going to be taught by, by Christian Schaffner. Um, and this is about both uh, post-quantum cryptography. So like how do we protect our classical computers against quantum attacks and the types of cryptography we can do using a quantum computer. Then we have a more physics-oriented course, Advanced Numerical Methods in Many-Body Physics. So this is for people that maybe come from a physics background and like after taking the course Introduction to Quantum Hardware, they want to go more in depth and uh, learn more about all the interesting physics of, of, of many body systems. So think about like um, tensor network methods and uh, yeah, analyzing different states of matter and this kind of stuff. Um, yeah, we have a quantum in business course, which will be taught by Bakun Hunland, who just talked a little bit about the business side of things. Um, and this is a course where uh, you work with a, with a team of students and you try to develop a business case. So you try to think, um, okay, like, can we find an area where we could build a company around this idea? Like, how, how could we do something actually useful and think about it sort of end to end, like how would you actually make money out of this idea? So this is to, if you want to go into, into business later, or maybe you want to start your own company later, you can get some experience in trying to, in trying to like, well, how, how do you go about it? How do you go about, make, about making a business case to an investor? And finally, in the second year, we also have some, some other courses. So this selected topics in quantum information processing course, so the idea with this one is that we'll invite uh, speakers, potentially from all over the world, to present about their uh, about their current research. So you get like short you, you get you get short snippets of very specialized uh, research topics, and this is also to inspire you for like okay, what kind of research is is out there? Because there's there's so many different directions you can go in. Uh, and then we have advanced content information theory. So this is really a follow up course to uh, the quantum information theory course. And there, yeah, we just, you just like delve even more into, 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 the, into the depths of just foundational questions around uh, quantum information. All right. Um, we have a couple of more questions. Okay, so the question is, um, if you do a double masters, Oh, somehow my presentation ended. If you do a double masters, uh, how does it work with the combined thesis? So we are still um, thinking about how the double master will be structured. So this is not set in stone yet, but um, we we probably we expect that it will just be a single combined thesis. So um, I believe the mathematics program has a thirty six EC thesis, maybe forty two. I'm sorry, I've got the exact number. Uh, and our base level thesis is 30 ECs. Uh, and we are thinking that the combined thesis, for instance, for the mathematics would be about 60 EC. So it would be a single thesis, but it would be almost like the combined ECs worth of effort. And the way we would structure it is you would have two supervisors, one supervisor from our quantum computer science master and one supervisor from the mathematics master. Do electives like quantum cryptography require prior knowledge? It's a good question. So the idea is, is that if you follow the mandatory courses, then you'll have all the knowledge necessary in order to follow the uh, restricted choice courses. So we structured this in such a way that um, yeah, just by taking the mandatory ones, you'll be able to follow any combination of restricted choice courses. So there's also no interdependency between these courses here. 
Um, of course, like for a course like advanced numerical methods, um, it helps if you have more physics background, it makes it easier, but we are still structuring it in such a way that you can't follow it if you have no uh, other physics knowledge there. Are there already companies for internships? So I, I personally know a couple of companies that, uh, that regularly take internships of students, but uh, I think perhaps uh, Kuhn is uh, better suited to answer this question. <laughs> uh, Kuhn, if you, if you want. Yes, maybe if I can answer that. I mean, I don't have a definite yes from, or like definite proposal from companies because, hey, the master hasn't even started yet and it will be another at least a year until students will be looking at this. Um, but we are in frequent contact with companies and companies are extremely interested in good students. So I'm, I, I have no doubt whatsoever that many interesting companies would love to have master students that will do an internship there. And to give an example, there is a university of applied sciences that was earlier mentioned that will have a more applied program, more physics -y. that is also gathering, uh, yeah, a lot of companies making a list. Uh, of companies that that will offer an internship and of course we'll also look at them and we have a unique advantage right with arguably smarter students from the university of amsterdam and more software focused okay. thank you Kuk. was that it <laughs> all right well we still have, we still have some time left but um since the questions from now have run out so i'm just gonna um, stick around for a while and um, yeah, if you have any other questions, uh, feel free to still ask them. So again, if all of this sounds inter interesting to you, I highly recommend um, signing up to our newsletter. So if you go to our website, maybe you can just uh, show the website actually, maybe that's a good idea. So if you go to our website, upon computer science, and you go to contact, you see if there's this button, keep me informed. And if you click that, you can sign up to this mailing list. We won't spam you, we promise, only only interesting things. Um, mostly it's just like, uh, let you know, like as soon as we know that this program is definitely going ahead uh, in September, All right, we have a question about um, career options outside of research. Very good question. So this is, after all, a computer science degree. It's it's part of the, of the, of the Graduate School of Informatics. Um, and I think, as most of you know, there is always a, uh, a great lack of uh, people with the computer science skills, with programming skills, or with a strong mathematical background. So if you don't want to go uh, into research after this, um, I think uh, companies will be uh, companies are looking for uh, just people with a strong background in computer science or in mathematics. Um, yeah, they'll be very interested in the, in, in, the, in the types of graduates we produce. Um, yeah, like if I, um, yeah, I think I think in that sense, it's comparable to doing a master's in mathematics or physics, computer science, or really any science degree that, um, yeah, most of those people that don't go into research, they end up, um, at a company doing um, yeah, some other interesting thing. Um, 
yeah, like like the wide variety of of just uh, positions that people can take after finishing their their education. Okay, um, if there are no more questions, then um, I want to end this session. Uh, thank you all very much for your interest. Um, I hope I hope, I hope you, find, you found this interesting. And um, yeah, again, uh, sign up to the mailing list or email this email address if you want to have additional information. And uh, yeah, I hope to see many of you next year in September. Uh, thank you all very much.